Hey guys, so we're just gonna like bring it down for a moment and like you're listening to Filter who's providing the nice, beautiful, sentimental song so that we can remember. We're also particularly appreciative that he will be he will be Satoru delivering Iwata. his keynote in English and with a sore throat. Please join me in welcoming the top man at Nintendo oh, no. Worldwide, President Satoru Iwata. This was a bit a bit of a shock when this happened and yeah. um, because he was so young, yeah. like relatively 55. young, 55. Really young. Yeah, totally. Look at that hair. Um, but this, I wanted to call back to this and this has been, um, how he opens this has been made famous even in the news media and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, it's a perfect quote, but the entire thing, this is very near the beginning of his uh, starting as president of Nintendo. The entire thing just sets up the next 10 years for him. Um, and just, to, it, it sums him up so perfectly, this GDC talk. So I thought we'd watch it with about half of it cut out. I took out the stuff that was like very developer in intensive, but... Thank you very much, Jamil. On my business card, I am a corporate president. In my mind, I am a game developer. But in my heart, I am a gamer. Aww. So good! And you'll hear why he, he uh, summarizes Today, his career I'd here. like to speak to you from my heart about our jobs and about our industry. I remember the first video game I ever played. It was Pong and I loved it. Hmm. By the time I was in high school, I was the first person in my class to buy an early Hewlett Packard pocket calculator. <laughs> <laughs> He, he had a sore throat, so he's I coughing every so often. I was one of the original early adapters. But where most people use their calculators for higher mathematics, <laughs> I used mine to program video games. What a punk. <laughs> My first creation was a baseball yeah. game. <laughs> I don't think anyone can say it has bad graphics because it has no graphics. <laughs> Gameplay was represented by only by numbers. But when I saw my friends playing that game and having fun, it made me feel proud. To me, this was a source of energy and passion. That's pretty insane. At yeah. that passion for games insane began to blossom, guy was a true hard programmer. My life course mm -hmm. was set. Yeah. Who became a CEO to yeah. a president. In 1978, I entered the Tokyo Institute of Technology. I would have loved to study video game programming, but no <laughs> one was teaching it then. So I went to classes on engineering and early computer science. But after class, when my friends went back to the, their rooms to study, I took off on my motorcycle for one retail Ooh. store in Tokyo. Yeah. Does he not sound like the coolest <laughs> fucking <laughs> guy of all time? The first store to have the department entirely dedicated to personal computers. That was my hangout, and I was not alone. There were others there who also looked at those early computers and thought the same thing I did. How could we play games on them? We became friends, formed a club, and soon rented an apartment in the Akihabara district of Tokyo where we began designing our own games. We walked until midnight or later every night, and that group of friends is what became the company known today as HAL. The name came from the computer in the movie, 2001 nice. Space Odyssey, HAL. Fucking rocks. I didn't know that. We thought that 
name was very cool. <laughs> <laughs> also, this love is them. what I looked like back then. And this is what. <laughs> 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 Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> like all game creators, I was extremely cool too. Don't you think? <laughs> Uh. So, I don't really remember how, but I managed to keep up with my classwork and graduated from the institute. But when it came time to take a job, I had the distinction of joining the smallest company any of any graduate in my class. I left to become only the fifth full-time employee of HAL. And when I told my father this, you can imagine, <laughs> it was not the happiest moment in the history of my family. Yeah. Which, Dude, like, oh in Japan, Japan yeah. you want to get indoctrinated yeah. to a major corp. Yeah. You don't start, like, Japanese don't start their own businesses often. It's very kind of rare. People you might recognize the logo. ask me what I did when I was hired at HAL. Well, the answer is that I was a programmer and an engineer and a designer Jesus. and I marketed our games. Oh my God. I also ordered a lot of takeout food <laughs> and I helped clean up <laughs> and it was all great fun. In other words, he was an indie developer Perhaps before indies yeah. were the indies. The biggest moment yeah. in the history of how came when we had a rumor that Nintendo has developing a machine capable of incredible new graphics. The Famicom, or NES as it was called here in the States. We knew that this machine was for us. So we used every contact to, we could to get a meeting with Nintendo sure that one of our idea would become an instant hit. Yes, Nintendo did hire us, but not to amaze the world with one of our projects. Instead, they told us to fix one of their projects, a game that had seriously fallen behind schedule. Oh, this is where you strive, Instead man. of creating a game, we repaired a game. And it eventually was released as NES Pinball. This is common practice nowadays in development, actually. Like, you'll see major companies bring on small companies just to do a port that or to fix a game. That experience taught yeah. us that even artists must know the business side of game development. After all, if a game never comes to market, there is very little chance of it making any money. <laughs> You're so cute. Working in those days was also <laughs> instructive in another way. Because the graphics were so primitive by today's standards, we asked ourselves how we could spur the player's imagination as a substitute for what we couldn't display on the screen. Think about this. Someday our games won't look any better. What will we do then? Well, our work was satisfactory enough that we formed a close association with Nintendo. And as HAL invented a couple of early franchises, we also learned other lessons. Our first Kirby game taught us the value of teamwork. Since not everyone can be a Miyamoto, <laughs> we discovered that idea can come from several team members building on each other to make something superior to what one person could invent. Then we worked with the famous Japanese creator, Shigesato Itoi, who was already an avid gamer himself, to develop his first idea for a game. That series, called Mother in Japan, and released here in America as Earthbound proved to us that ideas take on a special appeal when they become 
interactive. Many years and many projects later, I went to work for Nintendo full time, and then one day, about three years ago, Mr. Yamauchi appointed me to succeed him as company president. Of course, this was a great honor, but it was also a great challenge. I knew this would require committing much more time and assume, assuming much more responsibility. Okay, he already works but in the at night. Yeah. game developers are familiar with such things. That he was able to do all these things and that he was good at so, all of them. Yeah. From programming like to creative to, to business. This morning to ordering quick and takeout? answer the two questions <laughs> that I'm often asked. Now that I've had two decades of experience in the video game world. So then, oh, on the other side of the coin, what do I think of when I consider so what I cut out there is he talked changed. for a while about um, just what makes games games. One word immediately but then he comes makes some to predictions mind. here and some bigger. So he says that's Especially what's happening here right now with in the, the Western Hemisphere. What year was this? Two thousand. The business is bigger. The North American and European retail market like alone oh, are boy. now worth approximately seventeen We're billion dollars. <laughs> In the U.S., really game sales <laughs> were up another 8% last year. There are games in your living room, your office, on your PDA, your cell phone, and of course, PDA. best of all, on your Nintendo DS. <laughs> Many in the media are shocked to learn that young men now spend more time playing games than watching TV. I love this quote. I think those of us in this room could have told them that a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> so On the other hand, true. What's more prominent in my thinking these days is how our industry is getting smaller. We are smaller in the amount of risk we are willing to accept. We are also smaller in how we define video games. So he goes on here genres, sports, platform, puzzles, and to so talk on. about how the genres are when becoming the last time we invented stale. a new genre. Mm -hmm. But as importantly, even within these genres, we have reduced the environments we use. The racing tracks, the soundtracks, the bosses, the heroes are starting to look more and more alike. We are even getting smaller in how we define progress. Making games look more photorealistic is not the only means of improving the game experience. So he's making some like you're starting to see like that this talk in a way at GDC I, I think shaped point, the future I over the next being decade misunderstood. of video games. So remember, I am a man who once programmed a baseball game with no baseball players. If anyone appreciate graphics, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> So even Iwata, who says that we shouldn't strive to just make graphics yeah. better, but what he's saying is, but you still, he appreciates graphics. Graphics yeah. do matter. Mm -hmm. But my point is that this is just one path to improve games. We need to find other improvement has more than one definition. And finally, I am most concerned with what we think as a game. Ah, so what we, how we define a game? As we spend more time and money chasing exactly the same players, That's sure. who are leaving behind? Are we creating games just for each other? Do you have friends and family members who do not play video games? Well, why don't they? So keep in mind, this is and before the release of the Wii. I would ask this. Say that. How often have you challenged yourself to create a game that you might not play? I think these questions form an important challenge for all of us. So I watched his keynotes from this all the way through the E3s for every speech he made, and it's incredible to watch as fact, his plan plays out. Is and as how he just basically week. comes He's out on stage each time and tells you what's going to happen. Sure. And then it happened cool. over and over and over again. And all of it orchestrated just how he wanted. 
Like, he laid the groundwork, and then it happened. Yeah. Um, and he was he totally giving we hype without us knowing. Without anybody knowing. That's... Mm -hmm. And, uh... It was, he, he employed what uh, people call the blue ocean strategy. It's actually a, a book. And it's a, uh, the idea of broadening a market instead of competing mm. with your competitors. Mm. Um, but it, I have to say, like, I, it hadn't struck me basically until last night where I was watching every single E3 all in sequence, how well he did it. Like, it was just insane. But um, now we're fast forwarding to an E3, the E3 where he debuts. Uh, Stand up. Here we go. We've got I mean, a few more. Any oh wait. Oh, this is still at the GDC. This is actually just a fun little moment where he and plays some DS. You to come up here and join me. Come on, don't be shy. <laughs> he says, "Anybody whose birthday it is this week, come up and join me." <laughs> On the screen above us, a very young Bill Trinity you comes see out. Bill, Bill's <laughs> car. I hope trading mine, right, Bill? <laughs> okay, let's start. Oh, lucky. <laughs> and remember, Mr. Iwata is not your standard corporate suit here. The guy he used to he used to program games. He certainly knows how to play them. So don't pull any punches. I'm Mario. You're Mario. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm a good player. Everybody, get Mario. <laughs> no! <laughs> oh. I have been trying to beat him all week and I've had no success. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm very bad. <laughs> I'm finally going to beat Mr. Wah. This is great. Well, and second place isn't too bad. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> oh my god, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, these days, I spend so much of my time on meetings and interviews and traveling. I sometimes forget how much fun how playing games. I like that. <laughs> um, yeah, it's how genuine he is. Just like it gets across so my well during that Iwata. talk. <laughs> I'm about making games. So here we are at E3, two and years later. I'm about playing games. Last night, I played Super Smash Brothers. That's my game. <laughs> <laughs> I kick some you-know-what. <laughs> it literally and was his game. I took his name. His name was Reggie. <laughs> <laughs> He was a huge part of bringing it to market. As Nintendo oh. president, I'm also all about asking questions. So, Reggie, I have a question for you. Who's your daddy? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people internally oh were against Nintendo characters hitting each other, and he uh, convinced yeah. them to bring Smash to market. Okay. Yeah. We gave you cool. DS. In addition to a ton of other things. A new Game Boy. And new games to play on them. And now you say you want to have a revolution. Remember the code name for it? Yeah. Well, I still wish We've got one. Boss. The boss. And it literally, like, you think it's so, uh, like, to call it the revolution, that's so conceited, this right? But it literally Nintendo revolutionized games. Yeah. We have Wizards I loved that meetings name. this week in Los Angeles. And then they named it after P. Clearly, <laughs> revolution is by it's too controversial. Let's call it after Body Fluid. console <laughs> we've ever manufactured. There's nothing wrong with that. In its final form, it will be even It's more true, Rhino. Yeah. It says, seeing this makes me hate directs even more. Me too. The DVD like, cases mm. stuck together. Yeah. Right now. I don't hate directs. I, I, like, I directs are their own awesome. charm, but yeah. it really makes you miss this. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. uh, just that it's, it's real. Yeah, yeah, it's true. So enthused with the new DS Cookbook software in Japan, that <laughs> I am yeah. making oh, it man. a point to prepare dinner for my family on my days off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and God. I have learned he that can cook too, I ladies. better focus 100% yep. and forget about 
all of my job while I'm chopping onions. He's <laughs> <laughs> awesome. When I focus on software like this, I know some veteran gamers fear that this was, Nintendo um, might have lost its passion throughout all the E3s, a constant games. thing you kept going back to. Or We're not forgetting about core. That user expansion products have nothing to do with them. I hope what you have seen and heard so far today shows this is not the case. But more importantly, I ask those veterans to remember their very first day as gamers. If Whoa. you are like yeah. me, this was an exciting time in life. And maybe a little intimidating because other people were already better than you. And Damn probably <laughs> even a little annoying because of those who said you are wasting your life. <laughs> yes, I had parents too. <laughs> <laughs> but look, like I mean, really, how many CEOs can you point out that were really geeks when they grew up, uh -huh. actually geeks, and that actually were a part of the business? It is a r absolute rarity for somebody who has actually grew up with the business founded and developed the business to become the head of the business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's usually a more it's usually market business guys who just oriented always person, done business. Yeah. And I don't want yeah. to shit on Reggie, but Reggie was Pizza Hut before this, I think <laughs> Michelin or something <laughs> like that, marketing, or well, Reggie I forget. Reggie was the 90s. He was just, he was just <laughs> yeah. a marketing guy for any company that would hire him, and you can tell, he's been demonstrated many times, he's not a gamer. <laughs> he can pretend to be, and he can like dedicate some time to trying to learn it, but like, that was a gamer. Yeah. And again, I'm not shitting on Reggie. I'm just saying it's such a rarity for this guy to have existed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. New players showing new enthusiasm are the most valuable prize in video games. Because if their early experience is positive, then they can become veteran players one day. Players for life. Today, we are seeing that it is not impossible to expand the gaming population. So, our next immediate challenge at Nintendo is this. To destroy the psychological barrier that separates veteran gamers from novice players. Yeah, buddy. That's interesting. Above all, we at Nintendo would like to make new proposals so that our products will not be narrowly classified, causing remarks like this game is for beginners or that one is for co-players. Like your papa play? To say it simply. The Wii? You got my an fucking grandfather, farmer? an old that farmer who just... Massive, everyone. like... <laughs> Callous farmer hands. The best game design lets users of all skill levels play together. For now, I hope you join me in one wish for our entire industry. Not only new games forever, but New gamers forever. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, oh God. <clears throat> and then a few more years. Everyone, this is Nintendo 3DS. I like this smoke. Yeah. <laughs> I like the live presentations. Mm -hmm. God, I wish they'd ha take these I back. I can't wait for you to try this. Hey, baby. How's it going? <laughs> oh, now, this is bittersweet because this is the last 
direct appearance he made. Hey, baby. I can't believe the moves he does in this. When you think about the fact that he's the best. Next one we'll show you. So we missed this because it was Japanese, uh, a Japanese direct. Um, but he talks about a rhythm having them coming out in Japan. And now we're just gonna look at some of the like, the good things that directs and advertisements like this brought us because of sort of the lighter Hello, side. Everyone. You may be curious about why I am wearing this hat. <laughs> just a little. As you can see, this is Mario's twin brother, Luigi's hat. So we like to call it the year 12 Luigi. The year of Luigi. Oh, so yeah. not everything you came up with. Yeah, the year of Luigi. But the oh, thing is, like these direct man. formats, the good thing in them is they it seemed to let him and the others like let loose. Well, maybe not Shigeru. Shigeru always has a rockin' time on stage, but like yeah. he really kind of goofed off in these directs. I feel. I remember shitting on him because he didn't have gloves on. Oh yeah. Oh. And then. <laughs> this was such a great moment. <laughs> <laughs> it was somebody Wii else who didn't have gloves then. Ah. Wii U Honda. At the beginning of this, he even said, like, I'd like to think for you to think of this being your opening. <laughs> like, to visualize yourself opening. <laughs> now it was the Xbox guy that you shot on for not having gloves. Ah, After you saw you. this. Okay. <laughs> あ、どうもあんまり綺麗に開けられませんでしたけれど。ごめんなさい。前は顔です。それで開封の儀を終わります。ありがとうございました。ハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハ
So I assigned myself to how to rejoin the team, finishing the game. Once again, while he I was, was CEO, I on the Japanese developers' diet of chips, pizza, and the rice balls, <laughs> and walking through the night from their offices. It was possible to see Mount Fuji, which many say is most impressive if you are willing to wake up and see it at dawn. But during this period, just as years before with our Kirby games, we at Hal would see the sun shining on the mount, mountain before we ever went to bed. <laughs> Many say the sight of the first light on Mount Fuji imp inspires them. But for me, I hope I never see it again. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. Oh my god! Uh, That's awesome! Can you <laughs> I also remember the first version of Smash Brothers developed for Nintendo 64. The concept for the game, as you know, was to take the classic friendly Nintendo franchise characters and have them, as you say here in America, beat the heck out of each other. <laughs> oh. The idea was not brand new. There certainly have been a lot of fighting games. And the characters looked pretty much the same way they always had. So, when we brought the idea to Nintendo, the concept did not sound hip or cool or revolutionary. And because of all this, there were people both inside and outside Nintendo who did not strongly favor our idea. And this was the environment that our team worked under. That attitude remained until the moment of truth, the moment when testers began picking up the controllers and actually playing the game. This is what happened. People smiled, then laughed, then began shouting to each other. That was the moment when everything for Smash Brothers changed. And I must tell you, this was also one of the proudest moments in my development career. Yes, the Smash Brothers series has become a great worldwide success because it sold over 10 million copies worldwide. Thank you very much. But the memory of that first moment when the testers began to play stays with me always. Hmm. That is that moment that I call success. We at HAL found a way to bring our idea to life. Our team believed deeply in the concept and we did not waver in our approach. So. In this important sense, we at HAL, we are just like every one of you. Even if we come from different sides of the world, speak different languages, even if we eat too many chips or rice balls, <laughs> even if we have different tastes in games, every one of us here today is identical in the most important way. Each one of us has the heart of the gamer. Thank you very much for your attention. Yeah. Yeah, take that right in your gut. Yeah. <laughs> One last word from Iwata. Oh, God. I don't think I appreciated him no. as much until he was gone. And then you, you really just sum up the whole thing. Uh, mm -hmm. But anyways, uh, he'll be missed and his legacy 
what we're gonna see next is what he had planned for us with the NX oh, crazy. system next year. And oh, I've been cynical about it, and I still will remain. I'm not gonna like. I think I'll be a little bit more open though now. I think that some of my cynicism has been curbed since his passing and putting things in perspective a little bit. Uh -huh. Because when you see like who's behind the decision making in the industry, and you just try to picture like, you know, even companies like Microsoft have some people like him working in there mm -hmm. who care that much. It does like, I've always been worried about be becoming jaded and cynical in this because I hate video game blogs for that exact reason yeah. and I think this really like helped put it in perspective a bit more because how inspirational is somebody who dedicated their life like that and like in every instance had so much enthusiasm mm -hmm. uh, so that's our little uh, I guess uh, acknowledgement or it's a tribute uh, thank you Iwata hmm.